North America has many levels of ecoregions or areas with similar ecosystem characteristics. Level 1 outlines the major ecological differences in areas across North America, while Level 3 subdivides these larger regions into areas with more specific characteristics. Many cicada broods emerge in the central and eastern portions of the U.S. during different years. We will be focusing on brood 13. Over 3,000 cicada species fall into two categories, annual cicadas which emerge yearly, or periodical cicadas which emerge every 13 or 17 years. The periodical cicada species Magicicada septumdecula, Magicicada cassini, and Magicicada septumdecim all appear in brood 13. In 2024, these species will emerge in the Chicago area after spending years underground. Cicada eggs are laid in tree grooves where they stay for six weeks before hatching. Each groove holds 20 to 30 rice-shaped eggs. Once hatched, cicada larvae feed on tree fluid for a few days. This allows them to grow to the size of a small ant. From there, the cicada larvae fall from the tree and begin to burrow under the ground where they stay for 17 years. They begin feeding off the roots of shrubs, plants, and trees while creating an intricate network of tunnels as deep as 8 feet below the surface. The cicadas will go through five instar stages or phases of development while underground. Each stage follows their growth from a 1mm larva to about an inch long nymph. They continue to tunnel and feed on the roots of plants, shrubs, and trees. Through these stages, the cicadas will molt, developing wings and growing into their nymph forms before leaving the ground 17 years later. During their fifth instar stage, the cicadas will begin to get closer to the surface, nearing about 8 inches. The cicadas will emerge in the spring once the temperature reaches 64 degrees Fahrenheit and climb up a nearby tree. After climbing the tree, the cicadas will go through their final molt, where their adult body and wings will be exposed. The molting process takes one to six hours, but it takes a few days for their bodies to fully harden. Adult cicadas are called imagos and have distinct defining characteristics. Female cicadas have pointed abdomens and an ovipositor, while males have a more rounded abdomen. During their four to six weeks of adulthood, their main goal is mating. During the day, males will sing to find their mates, while females respond. After mating, male cicadas die off while females lay their eggs in nearby trees. Once the eggs are laid, the females die as well, and the 17-year cycle begins again. Our site is located in Chicago, just north of Albany Park and south of Lincolnwood. Our focus will be on a roughly three-mile stretch of West Peterson Avenue. The west end of the site is marked by the Weber Spur, an abandoned train line, while the east is marked by Rose Hill Cemetery. West Peterson Avenue has many different land uses throughout our site. A few of these include parking lots, commercial buildings, parks, religious centers, and residential buildings. These models of existing conditions on the site are based on different areas of the avenue and help define different threats and benefits of cicadas, as well as opportunities for design. The first model shows the mix of recreational park, parking lot, and residential land uses. Through this site, you can see the extensive hardscape used for parking lots across from a recreational walking park. The hardscape creates an inhabitable space for cicadas as they are unable to burrow under or get the food and nutrients they need from plants while underground. The lack of medians and parkways are two features which could be opportunities for design. Expanding the parkways and creating medians with a wide variety of plants and small trees will create a space for not only cicadas but other pollinators, expanding the overall biodiversity of this area. The second model shows the mix of parking lots, commercial, and residential land uses. Similar to the first site with the overwhelming hardscape, the site is also free of medians and has few parkways, leaving the opportunity to incorporate more into the future design. Something important to note within the parkways is the type of grass planted. 
the grass currently present throughout the site requires frequent mowing. However, the use of things such as lawnmowers and other landscaping tools are threats to cicadas as they can interfere with cicada mating. The loud buzzing and vibrations can be mistaken for the male mating song. A large opportunity that can be seen throughout the site is the replacement of the grass with a no-mow alternative. The third model shows the mix of educational, recreational, and religious land uses. Because of the wide use of green space, parkways, and medians paired with minimal hardscape, this site creates a safe space for cicadas, allowing them to complete their life cycles with minimal disruptions. Areas like these create ideal cicada habitats and can benefit from the broods. Cicadas provide soil aeration through their tunnels, are an excellent source of nitrogen for the earth during decomposition, and also provide food for other wildlife in the area. Following the example of this site could create many design opportunities for the rest of West Peterson Avenue, including planting more trees like those in this area to attract and provide food for the brood. The Weber Spur marks the beginning of our stretch of West Peterson Avenue. The renovated raised walking park is similar to the 606 located nearby, with a specific native plant palette. Sumac trees and cockspur hawthorn trees line the pathways, while little bluestem and prairie drop seed grow throughout. Signage throughout the park gives useful information about the ecosystems in the Chicago area, focusing on the cicadas, their 17-year life cycles, and the importance of creating a safe space for them and other wildlife such as pollinators amongst a busy city. This new park marks the beginning of our site while creating a beautiful educational space for the residents of Chicago. Currently, West Peterson Avenue has a lot of underutilized median space. The new design focuses on creating beautiful pollinator gardens while also providing a safe space for cicadas to grow and fly. Every block on West Peterson Avenue now has a planted median. These medians feature a variety of native plant species such as black-eyed Susans, garden phlox, little bluestem, golden rods, coneflowers, and milkweed. Portions of West Peterson Avenue have larger spaces and the ability to house wider medians. Although these medians also feature the native planting palette, they also house small trees such as crab apples, Japanese tree lilacs, and apple service berries. These trees are common preferences for cicadas and will attract and house different species over the years. Under the trees are mushroom colonies. Mushrooms not only provide an excellent source of food for cicadas, but also create a symbiotic relationship with the trees. Mushroom species that are beneficial to trees in this area include morals, meadow mushrooms, chanterelles, and trumpets. Peterson Park has a lot of underutilized space with potential for safe cicada habitats. The new design features a Peterson Park planted with prime cicada habitat trees such as American Beech, Saucer Magnolia, Red Maple, Pin Oak, Accolade Elm, and Red Oak. 
These trees provide a perfect space for cicadas throughout their life cycle, creating a safe habitat and food source. The new design turns the excessive hardscape into parkways while replanting these areas with clover, a no-mow ground I'll cover option that helps alleviate the dangers that lawn mowers pose to cicadas. Alongside the clover, specific street trees that provide habitat for cicadas line the street. The tree species include red maples, pin oaks, accolade elms, and northern red oak, all which provide food and habitat for the cicadas throughout their life cycles. These trees also have a large wildlife attraction and provide bright fall colors. Finally, West Peterson Avenue has many parking lots that create large areas of hardscape throughout the site, creating a dangerous space for cicadas. A minor shift in parking lot design that incorporates less parking spaces and more trees can help alleviate this threat. Throughout this parking lot, parking spaces are replaced with clover beds, mushrooms, and trees such as red maples and American elms, creating a safer space for the cicadas and other wildlife. Overall, the new design for West Peterson Avenue provides a safe habitat for cicadas throughout their life cycle while also creating a beautiful space with pollinator attraction, native plantings, and educational benefits on the surrounding wildlife. <laughs>